Thank you. Uh, the final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 14491 in the name of Emma Harper on the Mabel Bypass and South Scotland Road infrastructure. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now? And I call on Emma Harper to open the debate. Ms Harper, please. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to start by thanking all from across the Chamber who have supported my motion regarding the Mabel Bypass and wider South Scotland infrastructure. All of their support from my colleagues has allowed us to have this important debate this evening, which is so crucial to those we represent across the South West of Scotland. And I'd also like to welcome the support and the collegial working um, and input from Jean Freeman, who's the constituency MSP for the area. She's been able to help engage in this issue, raise awareness of the issue, and I look forward to working with the Cabinet Secretary in the future about that. I also pay tribute to both the A75 and A77 action groups, also watching from home. Um, the digital infrastructure that uh, we have been so keen to wait on means that uh, many people have chosen not to transfer, uh, travel across the region, but they are watching from home. So I, I, pay, uh, I, I would like to thank them for their work in lobbying myself, other elected members and the Scottish Government for major investment on these transport and infrastructure issues affecting our main arterial routes in the South West. Presiding Officer, people in Maybole have been campaigning for a town bypass for 70 years. 70 years it seems it's a long time. Members of the Mabo Bypass Committee, Peter Mason, David Kilty, and former MSP Adam Ingram, to name but a few, helped me with the additional information ahead of this debate. I spoke directly with Peter and Adam and they explained that it was agreed by many, many people years ago, before this parliament was even created, that in order for Mabo to be a viable and modern town, a bypass was essential. And the committee should be commended for having the foresight to secure future funding to support the historic attributes of the town centre. In 1998, 22 years ago, even again before the creation of this parliament, the Maybole Community Council took the decision to set up a subcommittee to formally campaign for a bypass. Peter Mason has chaired the group ever since and I thank him for that. The committee, made up of hard-working hard and dedicated local people with cross-party associations, have met every single Transport Cabinet Secretary and Minister since this Parliament's creation 20 years ago. And their only interest is the future of Maybole and surrounding area, its people, its growth and its prosperity. Presiding Officer, speaking with the local people from Maybole has made me realise just how important a bypass is for the town. Five kilometres at an estimated cost of £30 million. In addition to some of the more obvious reasons in favour of a bypass is that overall roads improvement will contribute to attracting people to rural Scotland, GPs, teachers, healthcare workers and skilled professionals, people we need to live and work in our rural South West Scotland. Maybole and the connecting A77 boasts much of South Scotland's history, its historic buildings and its heritage. Both the town hall and the castle have serious cracks, which are believed to be due to the heavy traffic trundling its way through the town centre. Presiding officer, while I am encouraged that it is this SNP Scottish Government which has committed to the construction of the Maybole Bypass, I would urge the Cabinet Secretary and indeed the Scottish Government to make the contractor announcement as soon as possible. The announcement will allow for shovels to be in the ground and diggers to be in the ground and for this government to show the people of the South West that they are not forgotten. And that is this, it's this SNP government which is standing up and delivering for them. Presiding officer, as well as the Maybole bypass, there is also a need for wider upgrades to infrastructure around South Scotland, particularly the A75, 76 and 77. These main critical arterial routes connect the South West to wider Scotland and to international markets via the port of Cairn Ryan. Businesses, local people and our emergency services rely on these roads for their operations and they are essential in bringing people, tourists and investment to the region. For tourists, I am reminded of a comment since I was a wee girl which is aimed at people coming from the south heading north that they should not forget to turn left at Gretna. Presiding officer, the roads are not fit for current travelling and haulage purposes, and this is causing much upset, dismay and frustration for people locally. 
In August this summer, I hosted a meeting at Stranraer with representatives from the A75 and A77 action groups. It was also attended by Stena and P&O ferry representatives, as well as MSPs, and I welcomed the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Infrastructure and Connectivity. It was an opportunity to listen to the local voices. At the meeting, it was concerning to hear Stena and P&O, as well as local people, indicate that they felt forgotten by the Scottish Government because of no clear commitment for investment on these routes. Rather more worryingly, anecdotal evidence suggests that some hauliers are avoiding using the A75 and using alternative routes to access Ireland by travelling to Holyhead, blaming the poor infrastructure and the 40 mile an hour speed limit as the reason. We cannot let this happen, and I would ask the Scottish Government to investigate and discuss this with the companies. Presiding officer, I'd like to welcome the positive steps taken by this government for the improvements on the A75 and A77 so far, and the work to create the Mabel Bypass. I encourage people to provide input into the South West Strategic Roads Review, and indeed, when elected members met Hamza Youssef at a meeting organised by Gene Freeman MSP, he encouraged them to continue to feed into ongoing road improvement suggestions ahead of the launch of the review. I will take the opportunity to stress to the Cabinet Secretary how important it is for this SNP government to ensure that people in the South West are listened to, are connected to a wider Scotland and the rest of the UK, and most importantly, feel as if they are not forgotten. Additionally, I call on the Scottish Government to provide feedback as to when the construction company will be announced so that we can also witness the construction of the Mabel Bypass. Presiding officer, I conclude with a comment made to me from the chairman of Stranraer Development Trust, Romano Pertucci. But it reflects across the wider South West communities with regard to our conversation about the roads. Romano said, we are Scotland. Help make us part of Scotland and connect us to Scotland. So that's my message, presiding officer, to the cabinet secretary today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I call Brian Whittle to be followed by Colin Smith. Mr. Whittle, um, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I thank Emma Harper for bringing this uh, debate to the chamber? It's on the back of my own motion of, of something similar. Uh, so uh, that we only need to have one debate about this. Um, Ever since coming into this parliament, to be honest, this, this has been on, on the agenda. One of the first things uh, that I attended uh, as an MSP was, uh, was a meeting down in Dumfries uh, with the then Cabinet Secretary Hamza Youssef and uh, the Deputy First Minister. Uh, that room was uh, full of uh, local councillors, it was full of MSPs, uh, it was full of the hauliers, it was full of uh, the, sh the, the shipping uh, agents as well. And at that point, uh, I think both uh, the, the Cabinet Secretary and the Deputy First Minister said they were there to listen. Rolled on another year and uh, uh, pressure from the A75 and A77 action groups uh, meant there was another meeting in this parliament here with the Cabinet Secretary Hamza Youssef, who once again said he was here to listen. And then recently this year, we had the new Cabinet Secretary, Michael Matheson, uh, at a meeting, as, as, as Emma Harper has already said, who was there to listen. And this is kind of a, this, and, and, and this is the reality of the situation. We go all the way back to 2010, when the then uh, First Minister Alex Salmond, uh, when uh, welcoming the commitment of a £200 million investment by Stena and a £90 million investment by P&O, made a commitment to upgrade the 75 and the 77. In 2011, Alex Neil, who was then the Transport Secretary, stated it was a travesty that the previous uh, Labour government, uh, government here had not invested in the 77. 2016, we had Jean Freeman uh, campaigning leaflet saying, I'm working to make sure we see it started as promised and the Mabel Bypass as promised in 2017. 2017, the very same uh, campaigning leaflet said that the uh, confirmation from the Scottish, is seeking confirmation from or secured confirmation from the, the Scottish Government that it will be started in the summer of 2018 to build the Mabel Bypass. 20, summer of 2018, the newsletters dedicated half a page to say that the SNP government has made Mabel safer. Interestingly, it goes on to some lengths to avoid committing to a specific date. So now it looks like Mabel will get uh, the bypass it has uh, campaigned so long for and so rich richly deserves. I don't think it's going to get the one it does deserve, and it, does, it, speaks to, or it does not speak to that bigger picture of what's required around the transport infrastructure uh, of the South West. Mabel has a 20 mile an hour 
limit going through it. And that is to protect the buildings uh, and the people's safety on a trunk road. And it's worth noting that uh, I've got a map on, on the wall in my, uh, in my office. And it shows the whole of the trunk roads in Scotland and, and, and the, uh, where the 20 and 30 mile an hour limits and 40 mile an hour limits are uh, on, on the whole of the trunk roads. And if you look at the 75 and the 77, it's littered with 20 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour. You get to air, and from air you can get all the way to Aberdeen, or you can go all the way to Berwick. You get on the 75, once you get to the, 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 the M74, you can go all the way to Barcelona without uh, 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 con uh, coming in contact with another 30 mile an hour limit. I think the reality is, uh, Deputy Siding Officer, the South West is often quote, is quoted as the forgotten uh, corner of Scotland. I, I would go further, I think it's actually being ignored. Um, I think I, I drove up, I uh, had the great pleasure uh, with, the, with the Health and Sport Committee of driving up the A9. I will take an intervention, yeah. Emma Harper. Um, I asked Brian Whittle if he agrees that the fact that we're having this debate today will raise the awareness of the South West of Scotland so that we can turn around any of the forgotten rhetoric and, and make sure that the government is actually paying attention. Brian Whittle. Thank Emma Harper for that intervention. The reality is, I have to see my colleague um, 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 here, uh, Stanley Carson and I have been on this uh, campaign since we got in here. And quite frankly, uh, if I say uh, to you, uh, gently to Emma Harper, uh, you're a bit late to the party, quite frankly. We've been talking about this for a long time. And I think it's only because of campaigns like the 77 and the 75 action groups that have real, uh, uh, have started to gather that momentum that you've started to pay attention. Uh, and I'm sorry if that, if that upsets you, but I think that's the reality of where we are. And I said, I drove up the- I drove The up, members in I, his I, last I, minute. I drove up the A9, which, which is a fantastic, it's a real pleasure to drive up an A9. A it's a fantastic road. Now that road is going to be jeweled uh, and it'll be, uh, and, and they're talking about electrifying it before we get any work done. Uh, we will work done the 75 and the 76 and the 77 and the A70. It is time that we, it's time the South West got the investment that it so richly deserves. It is, it's there, for, not just for the economy of the South West, but the economy of Scotland. It is the big, Cairn Ryan is the biggest port in Scotland, and we are losing, at the last time I spoke to Stena, they are suggesting we're losing 6% of business to the Dublin Holyhead uh, route. And unless we actually have this investment, it will affect the economy of the whole of Scotland. Officer. Thank you very much, Mr. Whittle. I call Colin Smith to be followed by Joan McAlpine. Mr. Smith, please. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to Emma Harper for bringing forward her motion. The Cabinet Secretary may recall when he met South Scotland MSPs and, and members of the A77 and A75 action groups in September in Stranraer. John Campbell from the, the A77 Action Group laid a pile of envelopes on the table. Now, inside were numerous improvement plans for the road going back decades, none of which have happened. John even told us that the route for the Mabel bypass was pegged out in 1936, but it's never been built. So I suspect the people of Mabel will, be, will believe a bypass is going ahead when they physically see workers on the ground with shovels digging that road. But, President Officer, at a time the government are pledging £3 billion to jewel the A9 from Perth to Inverness, the fact that we're celebrating at just 1% of that level of investment is currently planned for trunk road upgrade projects in the whole of South West Scotland. I think it really does highlight that we are a forgotten region when it comes to investment in transport. I think as Brian Whittle alluded to, you can drive over 250 miles from Goldsby in the Highlands south to Ayrshire without having to go through a stretch of road where the speed limit is below 60 miles per hour. But as soon as you hit the village of Minishant on the A77, you have to go through not one, not two, but eight towns and villages with speed limits as low as 20 miles per hour in the 40 mile stretch to the ferry terminals at Cairn Ryan. And the A75, frankly, is not much better. This is the main trunk road that connects the north of England with Cairn Ryan and the ferry crossings to Northern Ireland. Yet the villages of Crockettford and Springholm remain without bypasses and most of the rest of the road is single carriageway with limited safe overtaking opportunities. And it is the connectivity with those ferry ports that is key. It's why these roads are of strategic importance, not just to southwest Scotland, but to all of Scotland, the north of England and Northern Ireland. Because fundamentally, this is not an issue about roads. This is an issue 
about the economy. The A75 and A77 carry billions of pounds of products and services to and from Northern Ireland every year. They also serve communities the length and breadth of South West Scotland, communities whose economic challenges are well documented. Dumfries and Galloway is the lowest paid region in the whole of the UK. We have a rising unemployment level at a time it's fallen nationally. And that's before you factor in the chronic problem of outward migration from the region of young people because of a lack of high-skilled, high-paid employment opportunities locally. There's no doubt the lack of investment in their infrastructure, both physical and digital, is a major barrier to growth for existing firms and to our ability to attract new businesses to South West Scotland. The need to break down those barriers shows... I certainly will, yeah. Willie Coffey. Thanks very much for taking the intervention. Mr Smith, can you tell us why, when your party was in power for 1992-07, you only invested £1.9 in the A77? But since the SNP took power in 2007, we've invested £35 million in the A77. Can you Colin, explain that? Colin Smith. I, I think you'll find going back many years, there's been significant investment that goes from Glasgow right down to Kilmarnock, where Mr Coffey lives. The reality is, however, there's been no investment and there is currently not a single, a single project in Dumfries and Galloway from this government to upgrade major roads in that area. Now, that, frankly, is shameful. And frankly, that's something that the government should, should take, frankly, no credit for at all. The fact that the government have actually proposing to invest £3 billion in the A9 is fantastic news to people in the north of Scotland. But why are we not getting more of that investment in south west Scotland? Because the reality is we need to break down those barriers for the A75 and the A77. And of course, there's going to be other roads in other parts of Scotland with overall higher vehicle numbers crying out for investment, but the significant tra traffic volumes and patterns that tie in with ferry times, much of it heavy goods vehicles travelling at 40 miles per hour, leads to pinch points where journey times on the A75 or A77 are just not good enough for such a strategically important route. The A75 and A77, frankly, aren't acting as economic pipelines for the southwest of Scotland. They're currently a stranglehold on economic growth. Now, in 2011, the then First Minister, Alex Salmon, opened the new Stena, Stena Ferry Terminal at Cairnwright. In his speech, he made a number of grand promises. He made a commitment to the three R's, regeneration, roads and rail. But in the delivery of all three for the people of South West Scotland, frankly, it's been fail, fail, fail. Now, President Officer, in concluding, in the brief time we have, it isn't possible to do justice to the undeniable economic case for investment in the A75 and A77, or to the sheer anger and frustration there is within South West Scotland at the neglect we feel when it comes to the lack of investment in the past. There's a reason we now have such active, passionate A75 and A77 action groups doing a great job raising the profile of the plight of our region's trunk roads. But it's time for the government to listen to them. It's time for a long-term commitment from the Scottish Government to duel the A75 and the A77. And it's time in the short term for clear plans for major upgrades and more passing places that will begin the journey towards that goal. And calling for this, the people of South West Scotland are not asking for favours. What we're asking for is fairness. Thank you. I call Joan McAlpine to be followed by John Scott. Ms McAlpine. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating Emma Harper on raising this important issue in Parliament and welcoming the very considerable £30 million investment in the Maybo Bypass. I asked about this investment in June this year and was pleased that the Cabinet Secretary confirmed in response to my parliamentary question that the construction would provide opportunities for small and medium-sized enterprises to bid for subcontractor roles uh, with site-based training opportunities as well and understand that peak employment during the construction will amount to 165 people. So that's really good news and it's a tremendous testament, as Emma Harper has said, to the tenacious campaigning uh, by local people and also a government uh, that listens because I noticed from the website, uh, the website of the Mabel Bypass Action Group uh, that as others have said, campaigners have been writing for years to previous transport ministers, the names, it was a trip down memory lane, names like Sarah Boyack, Tavi Scott, Nicole Stephen came up. Those ministers did not deliver, the SNP is delivering. Uh, and you, as others have said, as others have said, 
the campaign goes back 70 years, many years of Tory neglect of Scotland's infrastructure when the Tories were in charge before this parliament was set up. No, I won't. I want to make progress. Now, that was um, before austerity um, during the Labour, um, the Labour transport ministers I mentioned. Uh, since the financial crash of 2008, there's been a great deal less money available, but the Scottish Government is delivering. Um, that's all the more remarkable when you think that um, in the 10 years since the Tories have been in power uh, in Westminster, our, our um, budget in real terms will fall by 2 billion, but we're still delivering. The motion goes on to talk about other roads in the south of Scotland. Again, a similar theme emerges. Other parties carp and carp, but it's the SNP which delivers. Um, Brian Whittle mentions Brian Mittle mentions a meeting he was at in Dumfries in 2016 that he attended his first experience of talking about roads in the south of Scotland. It was actually myself who called for that transport summit in 2016 and it was delivered in August. So I think it's Brian Whittle who is a little bit late to the party. In a, in a members debate in 2012, I pointed out that the six improvement projects um, identified as priorities um, for the A75 uh, in the local transport plan of 2008 had all been delivered uh, by the SNP. It was just before the, the Hargrove to Kinmont announcement of a, that was a major upgrade was announced. So all those six projects in 2008 in the local plan were delivered by the SNP government. Now, you contrast that, um, as I did in 2012, with the previous Labour government. From 1997 to 2007, only one major project was completed on the A75 compared to the SNP6. And furthermore, in five years to 2012, the SNP government devoted 36.7 million to special projects on that road alone. In 10 years, Labour spent 5.9 million. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I don't think there is more to do for the A75. Uh, I'll, take, I'll take an intervention from Colin Smith. Yeah. Colin Smith. Calpine think at the moment the fact that the government are committed to spending £3 billion on the A9, which is good news for the people of the north of Scotland, the fact that there are currently no proposals other than the Mabel Bypass for the whole of the south west Scotland means that we are getting a fair share of government investment at the moment. Joe McAlpine. <laughs> Is that issue actually, Colin Smith, because um, I, I was met, was going to go on to say, I talked about the local transport plan of 2008, which had six project priorities for the A75, which were all delivered. I was really surprised in 2016 to look and see that that plan had not been updated. Now, Colin Smith was head of economy in the and Galloway Council at the time. So if he it's was so keen plan. for the Scottish Government to improve the A75, why did he not get the finger out? and tell the Scottish Government what it, he wanted, what he wanted the government to do. That's why I called the Transport Summit to focus everyone's, focus everyone's attention. No, 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 no. I want to, to excuse up. me, please sit down a moment. I want to hear the member can also say to the OR, microphones do not come on when people are heckling. Please continue, yeah. Ms. Cunningham. Thank you. So the constructive way forward, as I said in calling the Transport Summit, was to, to get a focus so that we could update that local transport plan, which still hasn't been updated, and let the government know what, what the priorities were. And that's what the, what's the, what the government, that was the, the government did. What you need to focus on is to make sure that the government's national transport priorities, which are outlined in the Strategic Transport Review, contain contain ideas for upgrading roads in the southwest. In particular, I'm interested in the A75. Now, as a result, as a result of, of, of that, what the government has done is that they have actually launched, uh, launched a, a study. They've commissioned the Southwest Scotland Transport Study, which focuses on how to connect DNG and South Ayrshire to key markets. And at the moment, the consultants, ACOM, are consulting with, with people right across uh, the South Scotland important stakeholder groups. And I think it's important that we all come forward with constructive proposals. That is why I have worked with the dual A75 group. It's why I actually got the dual A75 group a meeting where they could brief 
the previous minister on uh, some of the challenges for that road. But it is important that we, we should actually, other people have learned, have talked about the A9. We need to learn from the campaigners on the A9 and feed in to these kind of reviews. And I am confident that when we do that, that this government will deliver because this government has a record of delivering which the Tories and the Labour do not. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. I call John Scott to be followed by Finlay Carson. Mr Scott, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by congratulating Emma Harper on securing her motion for debate today? And note that she is part of the current generation of politicians calling for a Mabel bypass and declare an interest as a resident of Carrick, which has been disadvantaged by the lack of a Mabel bypass for many years. Brian Whittle, too, has recently nailed his colours to the mast of campaigning for this bypass, as is Jean Freeman. Before her, Adam Ingram, Phil Galley, Cathy Jimison, George Fawkes, George Younger, Colonel Sir Thomas Moore, and those are just the ones that I have known. Presiding officer, if indeed today's debate tells us this bypass is about to be delivered, I just want you to know that it's been a long time in coming. Indeed, my father told me before he died that the first campaign to have a Mabel bypass took place between World War I and World War II, which tells Parliament just how long this has been an issue for the people of Carrick. And that has been confirmed today by Colin Smith. That a bypass would be a boon for the town's people of Maybole is beyond doubt, who have been blighted by the volume of traffic polluting their high street for generations. That a bypass would benefit significantly the people living to the south of Maybole in Girvan, Ballantree, Barhill, Newton, Stewart and Stranraer is beyond question. International businesses such as William Grant and Son based at Girvan with 60 lorries a day on the road and indeed all businesses as well as the Irish ferry traffic will welcome such a bypass. And I hope that on this occasion, it will indeed be built by the Scottish Government after so many false dawns. The locally held view is that they will believe it when they see it. Willie Coffey. Uh, Willie Coffey, intervention. Can you confirm, John, whether you and your party voted against the budget that allocated the funding to the Mabel bypass? John Scott. I can't, I can't confirm that one way or the other. I can't also remember, to be frank. However, today's debate encompasses the A77 and the A75, and I want to speak as well about the need to improve the A77 at the Bankfield Roundabout at Ayr, known lo locally as the Hospital Roundabout, where congestion at peak times of day usually makes it onto the Radio Scotland Road traffic reports. Southbound traffic on the A77 is often queued back to Holmeson Roundabout, almost a mile to the north of the Bankfield Roundabout, between 7.45 and 9 o'clock in the morning, as patients and staff make their way to Air Hospital. Similarly, in the evening, traffic can be queued from Air Hospital to the Bankfield Roundabout, with patients and staff overloading the A713 at that time. And, presiding officer, it's not just me saying that this part of the A77 from the Whitlitz Roundabout to the bank field roundabout needs to be made into dual carriageway. The minister will know that the case was made for this 10 years ago. Jacobs Consultancy produced a report for South Ayrshire Council demonstrating this need, a need which was stagger praised by Transport Scotland followed and is detailed still in Transport Scotland's website at table D 24.1.1 STPR objectives, objective two. And, presiding officer, in the last 10 years, absolutely nothing has been done about the need to upgrade the A77 from single to dual carriageway around here, between the Whitlitz roundabout and the Bankfield roundabout. And I can tell Parliament, from personal knowledge, the congestion which resulted in this stag appraisal requiring action to relieve congestion and address road safety concerns at that time has only got worse. So, presiding officer, it's time for another appraisal of this most congested part of the A77 to take place and a delivery plan to be put in place to seriously start addressing the needs of neglected A77 road users along its entire length, but particularly on this section of the A77 adjoining my constituency. Thank you. Thank you. I call Finlay Carson, last speaker in the open debate. Mr Carson. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. Whilst I welcome this debate being brought to the Chamber by Emma Harper, I do find it a bit strange 
that this debate is around welcoming something that hasn't yet happened. It's years late and it does not and will not deliver the bypass that the people of Ayrshire or Dumfries and Galloway want. And that is a bypass that is fit for the future, a dual carriage with, with associated cycle and walking paths. It is a landmark, however, a landmark of mediocrity. It's a further indication this government is not taking the southwest of Scotland seriously. Now, my contribution to this debate is around uh, the further investment in roads and indeed the rail infrastructure in a forgotten part of Scotland. And I must say it's incredulous that Emma Harper and, and Joan McAlpine can defend the lack of investment that this SNP government has delivered in infrastructure in Dumfries and Galloway. But may I start, you know, I'd like to make some progress. May I start with a, a topic which is top of my agenda and the constituents at the moment, that's the Stranraer Air Railway Line. This line was closed to all trains until this weekend because of the dangerous air station hotel. And I'd like to put on record my thanks to Alec Hines and his network, uh, Rail, uh, Scott Rail Alliance team, for getting services up and running again. But we need a, a cast iron assurance from the Cabinet Secretary that the task force will continue to meet regularly until the situation is fully resolved. And that tonight he can give us a commitment that trains will continue to run without further line closures. And if pl Platform 4 has to be closed again, as it may well do for work in the hotel, do we, demand, we demand that the train service can be run from a temporary platform south of Air Station. My constituents will accept nothing less. Now to the roads. I have lived only a few yards from the A75. Can I just for say the member, I was reading the motion, <laughs> wondering where we were coming now to the roads. There you go. Uh, it was about infrastructure investment, presiding officer. I, I live only a few hundred yards from the A75 and I've done so for almost 45 years of my life. And I've lost count of the number of fatalities that I've come across along its 95 miles and the impact that those fatalities have had on families and the communities they come from. My sad claim to fame is that my great auntie, when a child, was the first recorded fatality on that road. And one of the very first fatalities in a road uh, traffic accident in Scotland after being hit by a car only five yards from where my father still lives. The A75 is a Euro route, part of the E11, and it has huge importance not only to Dumfries and Galloway, but to the whole of Europe, as it's the route to Cairn Ryan ferry ports, one of the shortest sea crossings to Ireland. Yet it is the only stretch of this Euro route that is not dual carriageway. We've seen the UK government duel the roads from Haysham and Holyhead, but here, in what should be the fastest route to Ireland, many parts of the road, as the Deputy Presiding Officer will appreciate, particularly in the western end, have not changed much in decades, earning it the name of the longest goat track in Europe. Only two settlements in the whole East 17 are now not bypassed, and that's Springholm and Crockett Ford. And the can campaign group fight on a daily basis to get a bypass, which would dramatically improve the villagers' quality of life. We all know that the route is classed as one of the most dangerous in the UK, with a tragic list of fatalities over the years. The fa fatalities may have reduced, but the stats do not record the near misses or the number of drivers who are frightened every time they take to this route, with the hundreds of HGVs travelling on its length daily on a road in many places not fit to take them. I would not say I was a nervous driver, but only last night an HGV tailgated me travelling at 60 miles an hour for six miles, and I've got its licence number here, swerving onto the wrong side of the road in attempts to pass me. And this is not unusual. Last week, a video recorded three lorries side by side travelling up the Gatehouse Bypass, a gut-churning film, which is the reality of the day-to-day -day driving on this road. Hugh Gaffney and other residents of the Hockover have campaigned for years for improvements to the junction to their village. They take their lives in their hands every time they turn the carriageway to get home. And there have been many near, miss near misses, but their pleas have fallen on deaf ears because there hasn't been enough fatalities to warrant improvements. This is simply not acceptable. Currently, the roadside maintenance, including road signs, hedges and trees, are not carried out to the proper level, making the road even more dangerous. Perhaps like the community surveys, where the question is often asked whether people feel safe in their communities, we should ask the public that have to use the A75, do they feel safe using this road? And I can tell the Minister right now, there will be an overwhelming no. I urge constituents to respond to the South West Scotland Transport Study before the deadline of the 16th of November. And I would urge the Cabinet Secretary to act upon it as a matter of urgency. We've waited long enough for this government to deliver the South for the South West. 
and for the formation and the, and the formation of groups such as the Dual A75, the A77 Action Group, the Spring Home Road Safety Group sends a clear message that the people of South West Scotland have waited long enough. We need action now before we see the ferries leaving Cairn Ryan, before we see companies leaving Galloway and before we see any more deaths on our appalling roads. Thank you very much, Mr Carson. I call Michael Matheson to close the Government Cabinet Secretary, please. Uh, thank you, uh, President Officer. And can I, like others, uh, congratulate Emma Happel on securing time for this debate on an issue which I know is very important to her and her constituents. And I welcome the fact that uh, some of our constituents are able to watch this online, no doubt as a result of the Scottish Government's investment into digital infrastructure in Scotland due to the failure of the UK Government to make the necessary investment into uh, these important infrastructure investments within the Scottish economy. So, and officer, uh, today's debate, um, uh, a lot of people laugh at the UK Government on a regular basis, Mr Whittle. Can I say that the, this debate uh, reflects a number of the issues which were highlighted to me during the course of my visit to Stranra in August of this year, when a number of the elected members participated in the meeting alongside that of the Action Group for the A75 and the A77. I want to uh, reassure all members here and also those members within those Action Groups about the Scottish Government's recognition of the importance that transport plays to those living and working in the south of Scotland. And that's why we are taking steps to address some of these uh, matters. Uh, members will uh, have uh, already highlighted the fact that there has been calls for a Mabel Bypass for from the point when uh, uh, John Scott was uh, reflecting on his father's stories of the uh, requirement for a bypass many years ago and we heard from Colin Smith on the fact that it was pegged out apparently back in the 1930s and as Emma Harper said um, there have been calls for it for uh, some 70 years. The good news is, presiding officer, this government is going to deliver a Mabel bypass and the process is presently out to procurement which is going well and should be completed by December of this year. At which point, as I note the interest that uh, Ms Harper has in this matter and setting out who that will actually be, once that procurement process has been completed, we will be in a position to be able to announce who the contractor will be in taking forward that important piece of work. And the importance of this uh, project of the Mabel Bypass is one which will help to separate out local traffic, uh, get into the town of Mabel, and also to separate out that traffic which is going further afield, including those who are travelling on to uh, the ports and uh, the, rem the rest of uh, the A77. But for residents in Mabel, there is absolutely no doubt this uh, £30 million worth of investment into this particular bypass uh, will have significant benefits for those who live and reside within the M Mabel area. It's predicted that the bypass will reduce the traffic on the high street of approximately some 50%. And the number of heavy goods vehicles going through the town, it's estimated, will reduce by some 90%. I've got absolutely no doubt, Absolute Officer, that will deliver significant benefits uh, to those within uh, the Mabel area and those who live within the town itself. And I want, like uh, others, to recognise the uh, way in which those who have been involved in pursuing the issue of a uh, uh, bypass for Mabel over many years and the way in which they've conducted their, uh, their, uh, the process of engaging in this whole exercise. I want to pay tribute to them and congratulate them uh, on the way in which they have pursued this issue, and in particular the Mabel Bypass uh, Committee, uh, on the important contribution they've played in helping to secure this investment into delivering the Mabel Bypass, something which will benefit future at generations and I want to uh, offer my thanks to them for their contribution to this over uh, the years. So, officer, members, are, members have raised other issues in relation to the wider transport infrastructure within uh, the southwest of Scotland in relation to the particular to the A75 and to the A77 uh, which I recognise are extremely important in terms of providing key links to the port of Cairn Ryan whether it be for people who are making a daily commute or businesses, freight, leisure journeys or those who are travelling over to uh, the island of Arm. As members will recognise in taking forward uh, plans for investment, particularly significant investment into our trunk route process, there is a process that has to be gone through in order to identify the best option 
for pursuing any such investment. A key part of that is to make sure that the type of investment is one which will deliver the outcomes that we are looking for. And that process is already underway. We've already started the process of uh, drafting the new national transport strategy, which will set out uh, the vision and the outcomes that we are looking to achieve with our strategic investment into Scotland's transport infrastructure, including for the southwest of Scotland, with key priorities being in the economy, equality, climate and in health. And as we complete that process, the next step will be the second strategic transport projects review, which will set out where we will make our strategic investments over the course of the next 20 years. And that will include the transport network within the southwest of Scotland. And that process has also started. It has started with the Southwest Scotland Transport Survey, which is already underway. It's very clear from the feedback I've had from officials from the meetings which have taken place, there is a real interest in participating in that process. So, for example, in the, uh, the uh, stakeholder meetings which have taken place uh, to date, for example, one of them, there were some 80 individuals invited to it and 60 attended the workshop in order to have input into the process. The online survey, which is part of this study's exercise, was launched on the 19th of September, and so far, 2,500 people have contributed to that process. This is a study which has been taken forward in partnership with Dumfries and Galloway Council, East Ayrshire Council, South Ayrshire Council, uh, the Ayrshire Roads Alliance, SPT, also the Local Regional Transport Partnership, who are all on the project group driving this forward. And that will allow us to look very specifically, I'll give way just a moment, that will allow us to look very specifically at the issues that have been highlighted by those who have contributed to it, which so far have included issues about improving community bus services, improvements to the A75 and A77, the impact that freight traffic is having on the road network, and the resilience of the road network uh, when incidents do occur. All of which are important issues that the study will now be able to give further consideration to as we move forward. And I'll give way to Mr Whittle. Ryan Whittle. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for giving way. Just, just for the, the, the people who are uh, uh, watching this particular debate, can you perhaps give us some sense of a timescale as to when this will be finished, when it will feed into the, the, the sort of overall strategy and when potentially there would be uh, shovels in the ground? Cabinet Secretary. So, President Officer, the uh, study should be completed by the end of this year. That will then feed into the Strategic Transport uh, Projects Review, which will uh, commence into next year and into 2020. And that will set out then the national picture of the strategic transport investments that we will make in the years ahead. So that process is actually ahead of uh, a number of areas within Scotland where that type of study has not been undertaken uh, to date. So there's already progress being made on this matter. And I've got absolutely no doubt uh, that it will flag up a number of actions that need to be taken within the southwest of Scotland. I'm very conscious, President Officer, of time on uh, this matter. But I hope it gives a, an assurance that we as a government are listening very carefully to the views of those within the southwest of Scotland around what their priorities should be. And the study which we have commissioned uh, over the course of the last few months will allow those views and those voices to be captured and to make sure that we make the right decisions in the future about what that transport investment should be in the southwest of Scotland. But I am, President Officer, uh, pleased to be able to confirm to this chamber that despite the many decade, decades, actually the generations where people have been waiting for a bypass to be delivered for, to be delivered for Mabel, this government will be delivering it and will set that out in the weeks ahead. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.